part of fencing in America, it's Summer National Championships. It's the festival that takes place every 4th of July weekend. The very best athletes in the country are here testing for the national championships. In the end, fencing is a martial art. You're either winning or you're losing. But it's, you make that decision. You decide to get up in the morning and try to win, then you're going to win. Maybe not today, but eventually you keep plugging away at it, you will win. Or you'll be so satisfied where you finished that it's the same thing. But in fencing, the, the big, a big a mental challenge, I think, is not only are you losing, but someone's actually physically beating you. So I think it's hard. I think the mental challenge there becomes the issue of not only am I losing at this sport, someone's actually physically dominating me. And to fight back against that, well, I, you know, I really just want to give up now because I'm getting beaten both on a scoreboard and physically. So I think that's a big mental challenge. I think the length of the fencing day in terms of competition as a competitive issue is just so long and you and to focus and to keep maintain focus over the course of a fencing competition is, is an incredibly hard uh, situation or learning the ability to cycle through focusing relaxing and then coming back into focusing is really hard. Finally one kid he gave me a lot of hard time. You know where I read uh, some information about fencing but uh, he teach and after a couple months uh, I go to fight with this gentleman. I invite him to come and fence with me again. He said, hey, get out of here. I said, no, no. Take stick. And I do this. And somebody would, can you do it again? I said, take your stick, go again. I do it again. And 20 kids said, who teach you this? 20 kids will go to fencing. And at 14, 14, I loved that. <laughs> I loved winning one touch over the other person. When I was, when I fenced in Junior World Championships, my last Junior World Championships in 1999, I believe, I won a 15-14 and I made up some touch, I made up a hit. I've never learned it before, but I just made it up in the moment. Cause I was like, I'm gonna hit her right there. And then she keeps pairing my flick, but I've gotta hit her somewhere else. So I'm gonna have to figure this out. And I just sat down and I thought, okay, I'm not sat down, but sat down in my guard. I was like, I'm gonna hit her there. That's it, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna hit her there. My light's gonna go off, you know? And I wasn't thinking what if and this and calculating odds. I just said, oh, I'm gonna hit her there, you know? <laughs> Um, that's part of the problem is some fencers are too smart. <laughs> it's very important to be ready for the first touch because uh, if you're not, you get a couple touches against you quickly, it really puts you in a hole. And it clearly affects your game, not tactically, but sometimes it affects people psychologically as well. And now they're not only trying to dig out from a, a true point advantage, but they face with a psychological disadvantage as well. So we want to try to overcome that. Many times you have people on the Olympic level with the same athletic ability, but it's the people that have the mental toughness that makes you rise up against all the other uh, competitors. So mentally, you have to be tough. You have to be able to just never give up. You have to fight, and when you finish fighting, you gotta fight a little more. You have to always have the will to win. So she found fencing and forced me to go so that I stayed busy. And um, it never ended, you know, it never ended. And I didn't like it that much until I started becoming very good at it, number one. And number two, I always wanted to go to the Olympics. So that was my goal. Mm -hmm. My goal from day one was to be like Peter, be like all the other Olympians that were there before me. Yes, Peter helped me a lot with my nerves. I would say the, the most beneficial exercise that he, he did with me is to close my eyes before the tournament and visualize all the things that could go wrong, visualize everything that can go wrong, put myself in that state of mind, and just feel, uh, absorb what it would feel like. And then from that, I would feel that it's not so bad. You know, I still have my friends, still have my teammates, people are still there, you know, and, and it's, it's not that bad. So I was able to compete and go for things, meaning do certain actions that were risky, that took a lot of nerve to do, 
and not feel so bad if I didn't get it because um, I knew that if I gotten it, I would have got the touch and won the bout. And it came to a point where I won more time than I lost because when I went for these actions, because I was, I was prepared for them, I, was, uh, I knew what it felt like to lose, I knew what it felt like to not, you know, not be successful and didn't feel so bad. <laughs> when I was hunting Trollini, it was an honor. It was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. I, I, wanted, I, would, I wanted anything, everything. I would have given anything to have fenced her. And here I have the chance in the tableau, a random thing, and I get to fence her. And I was so, so excited. And I never thought, in my mind, I never thought, um, oh my God, this is Trelini. And, you know, I was never afraid. I was just very honored. And I think I honored who she was and her presence by bringing the best of my ability. I kept getting touch after touch. I was just focused on getting touches. That was it. How am I going to get the next touch? How am I going to get the next touch? So I was very present in the moment. And, uh, and then somehow I get the 15th touch. I mean, I just, I couldn't, I could have gone, kept going after that. That's the weird part, because I was just so intense about playing the game with her and going touch after touch that I wasn't even thinking about, okay, we're going 15. <laughs> so it was an honor. It was an honor to fence with her, and it was an even greater honor that I got to beat her. I mean, it was unbelievable. I was thinking in the semifinals of the university games against Omnes, Philippe Omnes of France, and the battle had been going back and forth. And out of the blue, yeah, I got it on film. I didn't action that. Nobody would have suspected. He didn't action. I just ducked. Went to complete squat, closed out the line, and ducked. And it was just perfect. It was absolutely, no one expected it. It was one of, the, one of those touches that you, I, I think a, a, a true champion can do something that no one expects. And that was my, my moment of being, maybe one of the few moments I was actually a true champion. I did something that no one in the gym could have thought about but me. And I solved it and it worked. It was fun. My favorite moment was when 1984 Nationals in Chicago. Uh, Whereas the first time I ever made a national final, uh, I was the youngest person at the time ever to make a Sabre final. And, uh, you know, that I, I got in the zone. You know, that one moment where you can't do anything wrong, everything is in slow motion, everything you do is perfect. You see your opponent slow down, you can counter everything they do. Uh, I didn't even have to think about strategy, it was just there. No matter what I did, it worked. I, to, to, me, to me, fencing is beautiful. You know, I, I, and, and it's beautiful to me because for 32 years I've been watching this sport and doing this sport, and I see the subtle actions or the subtle things that they do with their blade, with their feet, to set up a touch, you know, or I see a fencer give misinformation to their opponent and then just leave it out there, let it hang out in front of them for a while until they set it up again and do the same preparation or the same mistake and then capitalize on their opponent's reaction because they know what their opponent is going to do. I mean, that's beautiful, you know? I love watching actions like that. When you're a master, when you're really a virtuoso at something, it's not about thinking anymore. It's not about doing. It's about feeling. It's about this idea of, of it just flowing through you. And I think that's very zen in a way, because it's divorcing yourself from your mind and it's dissolving into the task that you're after. I have one memory. I walked in the opening ceremonies arm in arm with my brother. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know maybe, maybe outside of my wedding, there's not much better than that. Actually, seeing my, my little girl born. But walking in the Olympic Stadium with your brother, you swear everyone there is looking at you. You just feel like the whole world is looking at you. And coming in a sport like fencing, you don't get a lot of notoriety. There's nothing, but I will never forget that. I think that was a great feeling. All, all happy. The fact that I won a world championship at 14, I had no idea what that meant. How the hell did I go to Paris and win a tournament? <laughs> like, win a, like a world championship when no one else had ever won anything. Like no American had ever won anything. I made grown men cry. <laughs> they heard the national anthem for the first time. Like George Kolombatovich came up to me afterwards and Michael Marks. 
And these are guys who have been in fencing for so many years. And Michael Marks was an excellent fencer. And I'm up on that podium and I'm listening to the national anthem. And Michael Marks is like tears running down his face. And I'm thinking, this is amazing. I've done something. I've done something. My final bout in the Olympic Games uh, when I'm fencing for the medal was interesting because no one has won a medal before that in 1984 since 1960. That was the last time the United States has won a medal. So in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, that's 20 some odd years. I don't know whether it's 24 years or something. And I'm thinking, wow, my coach, I feel, I feel everybody's anxiety. I feel everyone nervous system. I feel everyone's stress. I feel everyone anxiety. Everyone is just, this is not just for me. It's for the American fencing. It's for the coaches. It's for my coach. It's for America. It's for black people that I know. So how did I feel? Scared as hell. It was so euphoric, it was so grand, it was so unbelievable. I savored and enjoyed every moment, every touch. I made it work for me. I was, it's almost like I'm living a whole life just for one bout. I enjoyed every second. I made my nervous system work for me. I didn't want to let it go. I was on top of the world. Anyway, it's 1414, it's totally glorious. This is just great. This is what you've been training so hard for. Fast. Furious. It is a fight. It is mentally challenging. It is psychologically challenging. You really have to be the best, and you have to show that you are the best and prove that you are the best. You can always use a metaphor for fencing in, in everything you do in, in life. Somehow it works out. It's amazing that way.